Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is January 11th and our daily review of news about Ukraine. Last night, a warehouse facility caught fire in the city of Kharkiv after being hit by a Russian rocket. The relevant statement was made by the main department of the Ukrainian State Emergency Service in the Kharkiv region on Facebook and Ukraineform correspondent reports. On January 10, 2023, around 11 p.m., the enemy launched a rocket attack on the city of Kharkiv. One of projectiles hit a one-story warehouse facility, having caused a fire of over 1,000 square meters in area. The fire was extinguished at 1.41 a.m. Four fire and rescue equipment units and 25 rescuers from the Ukrainian State Emergency Service were working at the scene, the report states. According to Head of Criminal Investigations Division of the Main Department of the National Police of Ukraine in the Kharkiv region Seriai Balvanov, law enforcement officers discovered the tailparts of two Smirch Multiple Launch Rocket System, MLRS, projectiles at the scene of explosions. A reminder that, in the evening of January 10, 2023, Russian troops shelled Kharkiv's Kievsky district. A pyrotechnics warehouse was reported hit and began to detonate. Civilians remained unharmed. Photo, Main Department of the Ukrainian State Emergency Service in the Kharkiv region. On January 10, 2023, one civilian was killed and six injured in Russian attacks on the territory of Ukraine. The relevant statement was made by Deputy Head of the Office of the President of Ukraine Kirillo Tymoshenko on Telegram and Ukraineform correspondent reports. According to the data from regional military administrations, one person was killed and one injured in the Donetsk region, five people were injured in the Kherson region. A reminder that, on January 10, 2023, Russian invaders launched six missile strikes and 16 airstrikes, and opened fire with multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, over 50 times. On January 10, 2023, Russian invaders launched 17 attacks on nine settlements in the Donetsk region. Casualties among civilians were reported. The relevant statement was made by the main department of the National Police of Ukraine in the Donetsk region, and Ukraineform correspondent reports. The Donetsk region's police documented 17 Russian attacks. Russian occupation troops struck nine settlements. Casualties among civilians were reported. The enemy attacked such settlements as Avdiivka, Toritsk, Lyman, Koshchantinivka, Velikanovasilka, Pivnik, Nedelev, Terny, and Vermivka, the report states. Russian troops used the Grad Multiple Launch Rocket Systems, MLRS, S-300 missile systems, and artillery. Twelve civilian objects were destroyed or damaged, seven residential houses, garages, and a civilian car. The enemy fired two S-300 missiles at Koshchantinivka and Lyman. Destructions were reported but, according to the preliminary data, civilians remained unharmed. Abdiivka was affected by Russian attacks the most. The enemy struck the city with the Grad MLRS and artillery eight times. Currently, there is no information about destructions or casualties. In the village of Nedelev, a civilian was reported injured in Russia's artillery strikes. Over the past day, 90 more people have been evacuated with the help of the police. Generally, since the mandatory evacuation started, more than 34,920 civilians have been evacuated, including 5,164 children and 2,009 people with disabilities. Photo, National Police of Ukraine More than 700 transit declarations have been completed since the Convention on Common Transit customs visa-free regime, came into effect in Ukraine. The relevant statement was made by the Ukrainian State Customs Service on Telegram and Ukraineform correspondent reports. More than 700 transit declarations have been completed over three months since the customs visa-free regime started. Ukrainian exporters willingly use the benefits of the common transit procedure, and the number of T1 declarations is steadily growing every month, the report states. In October-December 2022, a total of 444 transit declarations were completed for exports from Ukraine. 
the number of completed declarations increased from 22 in October 2022 to 285 in December 2022, i.e. by about 13 times. Meanwhile, a total of 264 common transit declarations were completed for imports to Ukraine in October-December 2022. A reminder that the Convention on Common Transit, Customs Visa-Free Regime, came into effect in Ukraine on October 1, 2022. Special Forces members of the National Guard of Ukraine destroyed one tank and four infantry fighting vehicles of the Russian invaders in Avdiivka direction. The National Guard forces and means continue to carry out combat missions to repel armed aggression. The most active military operations are ongoing in Donetsk direction. The National Guard's special forces are also performing their tasks, the National Guard posted on Telegram, publishing a video showing some fragments of the attack. It is noted that thanks to effective work using aerial surveillance systems and drones, as well as thanks to the interaction with other units of the defense forces, Ukrainian defenders managed to systematically strike enemy positions and destroy their armored vehicles. As of January 11, the Russian Federation already lost 112,960 troops, 3,094 tanks, 6,159 armored personnel carriers, 2,078 artillery systems, and other weapons and equipment in the full-scale war waged against Ukraine. OL. Russian troops struck a children's hospital in Kherson City, damaging a neonatal care unit. Russian occupiers continue to fight with the Kherson Regional Children's Clinical Hospital. Yesterday evening, the Russists attacked the healthcare facility again, firing at the unit where medical care is provided to newborn babies, Yuroslav Yanashevich, head of the Kherson Regional Military Administration, posted on Telegram. As he noted, the six-story building of the neonatal care unit was damaged, windows were broken in the building. Read also, Russians hit Kherson region 63 times in past day, injuring five civilians the polyclinic of the hospital was also damaged, windows were broken due to the shelling. Nobody was injured. Photo, Yuroslav Yanashevich, Telegram OL. Seriai Cherevity, spokesman for the Eastern Group of Troops of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, denied the statements made by the Russian military about their alleged capture of the town of Soldar, Donetsk region. The Russians say that Soldar is under their control. It is not true. Wait for the details in the General Staff's report, Cherevity said, Suspil Media Outlet reports. Read also, heavy fighting ongoing to hold Soldar Malier for its part, the Strategic Communications Department at the Armed Forces of Ukraine denied the authenticity of photos published by the press service of Yevgeny Prigazin, the owner of Wagner PMC, as confirmation of the capture of the town by the Russian invaders. It seems that Prigazin's location does not correspond to reality, and he is not in the Soldar, Salt, mines. It's an information warfare operation element from Prigazin's PR staff aimed at the internal audience to at least somehow justify the crazy losses among the prison inmates, recruited by Wagner PMC, Stratcom posted on Telegram. As reported, heavy battles for Soldar are ongoing. The enemy keeps assaulting the town, despite heavy losses. OL. In the morning, Russian invaders shelled Sumy region with mortars, damaging a house. In the morning, around 8 o'clock, the Russians shelled Snobnovorotsk community with mortars. There were 10 strikes, Dmitro Zhyvytskyy, head of the Sumy Regional Military Administration, posted on Telegram. According to him, a residential building was damaged in the shelling. As the press service of the State Border Guard Service of Ukraine reports, the Russian occupiers continued shelling the border areas of Sumy and Chernihiv regions over the past day. In particular, the Lyka Pysarivka and Esman communities in Sumy region, Harodnia community in Chernihiv region, came under fire. OL. Ukrainian Parliament Commissioner for Human Rights Dmitro Lubinets met with Russia's Human Rights Commissioner Tatyana Moskalkova in Turkey. They discussed humanitarian issues related to the provision of human rights assistance to citizens of the two countries. Night of negotiations, a meeting was held with Russia's Human Rights Commissioner, Tatyana Moskalkova, within the framework of previously reached agreements. 
we discussed a wide range of humanitarian problems and cases related to the provision of human rights assistance to citizens of the two countries. We also exchanged specific proposals, Lubinitz posted on Facebook. As reported, on January 7, Lubinitz said that his meeting with Moskalkova would take place in the territory of Turkey and the return of Ukrainian POWs would be the main issue raised. On January 10, Lubinitz noted that the meeting with Russia's human rights commissioner in Ankara would be held in a tripartite format with the participation of Turkey. Photo, Facebook, slash Dimitro Lubinitz OL. Over the past day, Russian invaders struck the territory of Kherson region 63 times, injuring five civilians. Information on the enemy attacks over the past day, January 10. The Russian occupiers shelled the territory of Kherson region 63 times. Peaceful settlements were struck with artillery, MLRS, mortars, and tanks, Yuroslav Yanishevich, head of the Kherson Regional Military Administration, posted on Telegram. It is noted that the Russians shelled Kherson city 24 times, targeting residential neighborhoods. An educational institution, a hospital, private houses, and apartment blocks came under enemy fire. Yesterday, five people received injuries of varying degrees of severity in Russian shelling. As reported, on January 9, Russian troops shelled the territory of Kherson region 46 times. Two people were killed and two more were injured. Oh well. Today we were talking about those news. Warehouse catches fire after being hit by Russian rocket in Kharkiv last night. One civilian killed, six injured in Russian attacks on Ukraine over past day. Police show aftermath of Russian attacks on nine settlements in Donetsk region. More than 700 transit declarations completed since customs visa-free regime started. National Guard Special Forces destroy Russian tank for IFVs in Avdiivka direction. Russian troops strike Children's Hospital in Kherson. Armed forces of Ukraine deny capture of Soldar by Russians. Russians shell Sumy region with mortars. Ukraine's ombudsman meets with Russian Human Rights Commissioner in Turkey. Russians hit Kherson region 63 times in past day, injuring five civilians.